Matt Wilkerson, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thanks for having me, John. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from New York. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about the benefits of externship programs for the student and for organizations alike. Uh, I'm super excited to talk about this, I think, especially amidst the current labor market uh, and the need to reskill and upskill the workforce and to attract and retain really great talent. I think the the, uh, the ability to utilize externship programs is, can be a really important strategic piece of an organization's overall staffing and talent acquisition strategy. So I think uh, this will be a really fun conversation. As we get started, I wanted to share Matt's bio with everybody. Matt Wilkerson is the co-founder and CEO of Paragon One, which scales real work and experiential learning between companies, schools, and students. The company's flagship product, remote externships, are an alternative to internships that provide students with more access, flexibility, and credentialing opportunities so that they can build their resume while developing fundamental skills that employers seek. Matt holds both a BS degree in computer science and engineering and a BS in management science from MIT. Again, a pleasure to have you. Anything else you would like to share with me or my listeners by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in? Uh, no, that's great. Just, uh, yeah, engineer by training, worked in financial services and VC right out of school and was an entrepreneur uh, before this in e-commerce, before starting Paragon One. Wonderful. And why don't we start there? Why don't you tell us a little bit about the background behind Paragon One, how you, how that came about, uh, the mission, uh, why you started the company, uh, and then we can go from there. Sounds good. Paragon One's mission has been to help organizations expand economic opportunity, and we're doing that through real-work educational experiences. So what we've done is developed a tech platform that helps Fortune 1000 teams launch essentially live student education programs. They're fully remote, and they're all around a real-work experience. We call them remote externships, which kind of sounds like an internship, but uh, as we'll kind of get into, it's, it's quite different. And what it allows companies to do is have their employees engage with large cohorts of students. So you might be 30 or 50 students around a real work project, and they'll do that in a, a very efficient and scalable manner. We like to say we only need maybe 30 minutes to an hour of employee time to support a cohort of 50 students. And what we're envisioning is in a decade, a world where student ambition, no matter where you come from, is matched with incredible opportunity. So no matter your background, your education, your network, we all know that internships are kind of this must have if you wanna have a real opportunity upon leaving school. But it's interesting, if you look at Fortune 1000 internship programs, they usually have an 80 to 90% conversion rate to full-time hire. That's the expectation when they launch these programs. And that's because they're, they're actually a very heavy lift on HR but also on the teams that support students. So they really wanna be sure when they bring an intern in that they're gonna turn it into a full-time hire, hopefully. And that means that when they're recruiting for those interns, they're basically recruiting for a full-time hire. They want to see everyone buttoned up, kind of ready for prime time. The problem, if you have uh, remember being a student, is that you don't always have it figured out what you wanna do. Uh, and you have a limited amount of time to get to that kind of junior year internship that usually leads to the full-time hire. And so if you don't already have an impressive resume, or maybe you don't go to a certain school, or maybe you're just you're still exploring a career, or you're a first-generation student whose parents didn't tell you to start the race really early, this becomes a big problem. And it's an even bigger problem if you're an underserved or underrepresented student. And so it all comes down really to ROI for companies or the perceived ROI. And just kind of a, a quick story about that. When I was a, a banking analyst early in my career, I developed tendinitis in my hands. So I couldn't type for a while. And my job at that point was just to sit behind the interns who, you know, were kind of green, lost, needed a lot of help. And I mentored them. I coached them on financial analysis, how to do PowerPoint, how to do spreadsheets. And all of those interns got offers at the end of the summer to come back into the team I was at with Morgan Stanley because they had all this great training and support. But there's not usually some worker sitting around with nothing else to do to just train the interns or train the first year students. And so that, that reality that employee time is very, very valuable. People are busy. 
that keeps a lot of these opportunities from students at the end of the day. So what we wanted to build with Paragon One was a solution that did a couple of big things. Um, we wanted to provide a real work experience to students who may also still be exploring what they want to do. We also wanted to give companies the chance to give these experiences to students, but without taking up a lot of their team's time. And so we made it turnkey and yeah, happy to talk more about that. That's wonderful. And, and maybe you can help me understand the similarities and maybe differences between something I do. So I'm, I'm a university professor. I'm a department chair. I run a, an HR um, HRM program, and we do a lot of what sounds like maybe you're calling externships. We call them community engagement projects, consulting projects. So pretty much every course that the student goes through, they're going to work in teams as students, and they're going to work with an organization, with a company on a real world issue that that company's facing. So it's not an internship. It's more like collectively the team might put a hundred hours in um, to this project over the course of a semester. So it's, it's good real world learning opportunity and experience, not, the same as an internship, um, but it's it's uh, that experiential learning component. Is that consistent with what you're describing? That is. That's, that's a big inspiration here. We looked at some of the well-tested models in cohort-based education and learning, and you know exactly what you're describing. Some people might call them uh, case study programs, capstone projects, uh, where it's still classroom-based, right? You still, you know, in this case, you might be guiding the students on how they should be thinking about the work, how they should be developing the skill set. Uh, the company is involved, but you know you're, they might show up on certain occasions. And so in our case, uh, you can kind of think of replacing um, a professor's lecture with the company. So they'll come in uh, and have periodic webinars with a cohort of students and talk about strategy of the company, the importance of the work, how they're gonna use it. Um, and then we also provide uh, what we call program managers. These are like teaching assistants in a class, and they're there to check in weekly with students in a live setting, but also on our Discord channels and other forums to provide feedback, mentorship, um, and really just guide the students along. So th those are two components. And, and everything else is really handled by uh, a custom technology platform that we developed. It's kind of a part learning management system and part workflow management yeah. system. So we have a team that builds curriculum from the input from the company so that mm -hmm. the students are learning skills and, and, and really making sure that super they're cool. learning exactly what they need for the work. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, because from the faculty side, when I'm helping to facilitate, I'm like, you know, working to line up projects. That's that takes a lot of legwork, uh, reaching out to companies, trying to line up projects. Um, and it's also, you know, just a lot of work on my end to to make sure that I'm facilitating the projects, making sure they're high quality so that the students who are representing me and the business school and the university are, you know, representing us well. Uh, and then just trying to stay up to date on the rapid pace of change in industry to make sure that I'm staying relevant with what the companies actually need. That's a heavy lift for faculty. Uh, and that's something yeah. I've been committed to. And so I, I feel like I do a pretty good job of it. But frankly, it's it's not something I can ask of every faculty member to do, uh, especially anyone who might be coming in as a part-time faculty member. Uh, and so this sounds really cool because you're constantly getting that input from the organization uh, where they're really co-educators in the whole process. And they're making sure that in real time, they're training and teaching students on uh, what needs to be happening uh, for their organization. So that sounds really cool because you're staying up to date with the current trends, the current needs of the organization in real time. Exactly. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so tell us then more about uh, the platform itself and how that works. You said it's a mix you know, of a learning management system uh, with some other things. Tell us a little bit more about how that functions. Yeah, so the idea behind our platform and our tech is that we want to make everything turnkey. So starting with the recruiting of the students, the uh, assessment, onboarding, curriculum and training, uh, but also as the students go through each week, and these programs usually are six to eight weeks long, each week there's going to be a new part of the curriculum that unlocks around the project. So let's take, for example, um, they're working in data analytics, or actually a, a program that we're running right now with HSBC uh, is in Web3, Web3 product management. Uh, and the students, in this case, they're 
prototyping and designing the Web3 bank of the future, because HSBC is really interested to know uh, what sort of decentralized technologies, uh, DeFi, crypto, um, Web3 technologies that will be used to disrupt the banking system. So each uh, week, students will learn about a new concept. Uh, and as they go through each week, there'll be a, a set of tasks and training that are coupled together so that they might get some early practice and rehearsal on what they might do. And in the later weeks, there might be some final project that they're putting together. Um, you know, it could be a prototype in product management. It could be um, a presentation if they're make, making a pitch to a marketing team. So whatever that is at the end, they'll also present to the company. And oftentimes senior leadership will come and give feedback to the students in real time. Along the way though, they're gonna to get to check in on how their work is going. So it's kind of like having this trainer in, in your corner, giving you feedback on the work, helping you refine it. So when you do present it to the company, um, you know, if you've never done this before, it can be intimidating, some of these functions, but you'll have that insight from someone who's supporting you. Yeah, super cool. And I, 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 my head is spinning. And after the interview, you know, offline, I just want to talk to you about, you know, possible ways to partner, you know, here at my university, because everything you're describing is exactly in line with what our aims and goals are and what we're trying to accomplish. We're just doing it, it sounds like in a more complicated um uh, time consuming way <laughs> that maybe we can streamline. And so that, that sounds yeah, fantastic. So we'll have that conversation. Um, tell us a little bit now, I know you have a collaboration with HP tech ventures. Um, yeah. tell us a little bit more about that. And then maybe some of the other companies you're currently working with. Sure. Uh, so HP tech ventures is the corporate venture arm, venture capital arm of HP. And over the last 18 months, we've worked with close to 500 students on basically learning how to be a venture capitalist. So these students are coming in and researching industries, researching sectors and promising startups with, that have really transformative technologies um, and kind of doing the work that you would if you were a venture capital associate uh, coming in and sourcing deals. Um, and so we'll train them on how to identify promising startups, how to analyze industries. And they're constantly pitching startups to uh, the managing directors and partners at HP Tech Ventures. And we've even had some students identify startups that um, HP has started going down the due diligence process with. So um, they've the HP team has found it really beneficial uh, for their own insights, but also for the students, uh, they're able to reach a pretty geographically diverse population. Yeah, and, and you've mentioned that previously. I just want to put a fine point on that because it really is one of the huge benefits of this externship approach is the remote externships allow you, you're not limited to one geographic location and you're not limited to those people that disproportionately come from upper middle class, uh, well-off families. And can we reach the, the marginalized, disadvantaged or underprivileged populations and give them opportunities as well uh, so it's really uh, an economic mobility kind of a tool and strategy yeah, cool. that we're we're really helping to level the playing field and give give everyone a real chance to develop the skills that organizations need so that they're ready to go and make a contribution, make a difference. And that's clearly a win for organizations. They they say that constantly. I know here at our university that we try to have those constant conversations with industry. We have industry advisory boards for each of our programs. We're constantly doing these projects. We're constantly trying to make sure that we're preparing students that have relevant skills to go out into the workforce and make an immediate contribution. And even with all of those efforts, you know, we still feel like we're constantly trying to get that input, constantly trying to update our curriculum, constantly trying to do those things uh, to provide our students with the opportunities that they need. And so what you're describing is really the, great equalizer in my mind that now you're giving students the way to to tap into deep learning almost universally right so that we're not pegging it and limiting it to the privileged few but now we're giving this opportunity to a lot of students a lot of people that can, can now go make a difference that's better for society as a whole that's better for organizations that need to reskill and upskill their their um their employment pool and their talent uh their staffing yeah. And just a win all the way around. So I think that's fantastic. 
exactly. And what we're finding is a lot of the enterprise Fortune 1000 companies that work with us, um, many of them are are using externships really as a, to signal their commitment to career development and education of Gen Z and to signal a commitment to real diversity, equity, and inclusion yeah. impact where you're actually changing a student's life, right? If a student yeah. now gets an opportunity from Pfizer, from Meta, uh, from HSBC on their resume, that opens up doors, right? Whether or not the student goes and works with that company, um, that opens up doors for the students. Now, why is that important for a, a company to kind of invest in talent? They're not 100% sure that they want to bring on board like with their internship program. Well, what we're finding is that a lot of companies are leading from kind of this uh, corporate social responsibility um, mindset around how do I elevate my employer brand with Gen Z? How do I show that signal of commitment? And it shows up in, in a lot of different ways for, for the employers. It's a benefit to um, just, you know, their, their outside brand with shareholders, with potential candidates, but also internally with employees because they're giving their employees now a chance not just to do traditional volunteering on a one-to-one -one basis, but to volunteer their time uh, for impact, right? If you spend an hour with 30 to 50 students that you didn't have to prep all those lesson plans for necessarily, right? Um, that's an incredibly efficient use of employees' time. And the employees we find, they love it because they they see the impact that they have that, that they're not just giving some mentorship over an hour, they're actually transforming how a student perceives an industry. They're helping them actually complete real work. And that's the, I think the big piece that ties this all together is that employee engagement. And over time, our belief is that this cohort-based model around real work will lead companies to this more innovative way of attracting talent, to engaging that talent, and ultimately assessing that talent on that work that doesn't involve the traditional resume screening necessarily, where we talked about all those, you know, there's obviously things around bias, around um, just not seeing what someone's capability is that doesn't come through on that little piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, very well said. And let's not also forget that when students are working on projects that, you know, are addressing a real challenge, a real problem, <clears throat> excuse me, addressing a real challenge, a real problem for organizations, that adds value to the organization here and now. So yeah. even if they don't end up hiring a bunch of those students later on, they, they've they still received value and also often at a bit of a discount rate, right? So like my students, they'll go out and do pretty substantial consulting projects for organizations, often projects the organization's not really going to get to on its own. We're offering exactly. it for free. Um Often these these projects are valued at 20, 30 grand, and we're doing it for free because we know they're putting in their time to help our students. Uh, and it's it's a good, it's a win-win, you know, with even without the students getting paid. And and so organizations are getting that value immediately, hopefully, if it's designed exactly. well. Uh, and then, of course, then they have the pipeline, um, the the diversity, equity, inclusion pieces, the social impact pieces that you've been talking about, all of which will be a good. A win for the employee experience, the employee branding for the organization. Wonderful, wonderful. Exactly. Uh, so tell us a little bit more then maybe in our final few minutes uh, about the successes you've had so far. Yeah. Oh, I also do want to hear if there's other, you know, companies that you want to mention that you're working with, um, but what are, what have successes looked like so far at Paragon One and where do you see yourself going in the next several years? Sure. Uh, well, I'll start off with, a couple of the biggest metrics that we track. The first is the success of our externs. So where do they get jobs afterwards? Did the externship help them land that job? 45% uh, of our externs are hired by a Fortune 1000 company, either an internship or full-time within six months of completing an externship program. So the, the students are very recruitable and we've pulled them, we've said, hey, did the externship help you? And they've rated it eight out of 10 and the impact in helping them land that next opportunity. 77% of externs, uh, just this is year to date, even just this year, are from an underserved, uh, underrepresented minority background. So black, Hispanic, Latinx. And, and just say that had, percentage one more time, because that's powerful. Sure, 77% yeah. of our externs are from an underrepresented uh, minority background. And we just just last month, 
we had over 1,100 active externs uh, doing extern doing six to eight week externship programs. Uh, and we've got some companies this year that will serve themselves over a thousand students uh, through their brand on externships. And so, so some of the companies that we're working with, um, PwC, Meta, National Geographic, Pfizer, the Nature Conservancy. Uh, this year we've, uh, I mentioned HP Tech Ventures. This year we launched programs with Cargill, HSBC, um, Beats by Dre. And then we're actually about to announce a program we're launching later this fall with Home Depot. A hundred percent of our enterprise customers last year have renewed or expanded with us this year. All of them have made uh, hires from the externship pool. And we also, of course, track, uh, or sorry, a couple other stats on the DEI side. Um, close to 60% of our externs have been women and 15% identify as LGBTQ. We also track the satisfaction of our students. So we, we track what's called the net promoter score. And so it generally asks, okay, would you recommend uh, the externship to a friend? And we rank 70. 70 is usually if you're above 50, it's considered excellent. So our NPS score with students is over 70. And we have a very strong ambassador network. That's something that we're very proud of. We, um, students who graduate externships, they get a certificate, they go online uh, through their social network and invite other students to apply. They go on their school communities, invite other students to apply. And so some of our programs, the majority of the applicants have actually come through the ambassador network. And that's, that's how we wanna get the word out to the student community. And can you speak just for another moment on the certificate piece? Uh, because in this world of micro-credentialing and professional certificates, uh, that that's something that I think resonates with a lot of people as they're trying to prepare yeah. for their career. Yeah, so we we issue all of our certificates uh, through a platform called Accredible on LinkedIn. So it essentially becomes a LinkedIn certificate that can be verified and validated uh, through Paragon One that they did complete that experience with the company. And if you go on LinkedIn right now and you just go to the search bar and type Paragon One and then click on posts, you can just scroll and just see endless numbers of students. Uh, we don't ask them to do this. They, they go on and they'll post their uh, certificate and they'll share about their experience. They'll share about what they you know learned. Obviously, uh, you know, confidential, confidentiality is... Uh, uh, we, we make very clear with the students is honored with the company's work, but, you know, they'll share at least conceptually what they worked on, what they learned uh, with these companies and invite other students to, to come in. And so that um, that network effect that we're seeing, that uh, that social community that we've been building is really powerful. So, so cool. I, my my wheels are spinning and I'm just super excited to continue this conversation with you offline uh, as it relates to my work at the university. Um, but for the sake of this conversation today, I'm going to uh, uh, give you a chance now as we wrap up to just share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, uh, what the first you know next steps would be for them, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Absolutely. So you can reach me at Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, at paragon1.com. That's spelled out, P-A-R-A-G-O-N-O-N-E.com. Um, and yeah, with, if you're a school, I can connect you with our, our school team. If you're a corporation that's interested in exploring externships, I um, can connect you with our partnerships team. Uh, but yeah, I'll just wrap with, you know, going back to our vision, I think that we really do believe that in a decade, corporations will kind of start taking this mantle on of, of the next generation educators and that you have all this amazing talent, employees and knowledge to unlock for students. It just has to be done in, the, in an efficient, structured way. We wanna use technology to make that happen so that eventually any student, no matter their background, if you have ambition, you will get the opportunity to explore your career. You will get the opportunity to try something out and not have those doors shut. Yeah, wonderful. Matt, this has just been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Matt and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.